Good morning, Grace Chapel family, and Merry Christmas to you. We are in chapter 10 of Sinclair Ferguson's Advent devotional, and today's reading was entitled The Way of Obedience, focusing on the dream vision that Joseph had regarding the conception of Jesus. I found it interesting that Matthew's Gospel records the angel's visit to Joseph, but not the visit to Mary, while Luke's does the opposite. Apparently, Joseph's dream comes sometime after it has become obvious that Mary is with child. So it is clear that Mary has known for some time what is going on. I assume that there have been many conversations between Mary and Joseph, and I wonder how he handled those conversations. Was he quiet? Was he dazed or confused or angry? How did he handle his own questions about what to do and believe about what was going on with Mary? What is clear from the text is that Joseph began to be afraid of taking Mary to be his wife. I think this is so instructive to us. What is it that often causes fear for us? I think it is very often the unknown and the feeling of lack of control that comes with the unknown. I believe that what is going on through Joseph's head is, what am I going to do? How will it affect me? How will it affect Mary? What is life going to be like now? Those unknowns, those uncontrollables, had to be consuming his thoughts and driving him a bit crazy. And his feelings are completely understandable. So how does God help Joseph to deal with his fear? I think the answer is grace. He sends a personal angelic message to Joseph dealing directly with his greatest fear. What am I going to do with Mary? The answer, do not fear to take her as your wife. But the angel's message doesn't end there. He answers the question that Joseph really needed to be asking. What will God do with humanity's sin? Joseph's vision of his world was too small. It was dominated by his fear of what was happening in his immediate circumstances. When the angel says to him, Mary will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins, he graciously gives him much more than he was asking for. Not just a solution to an embarrassing, temporary predicament, but a solution to mankind's greatest predicament. Jesus will save us from our sins. There is no reason to fear anything if that is true. So God's answers to Joseph's fear is grace upon grace. He gets an answer to his temporal problem and his eternal problem. What is Joseph's response? Well, let me go back to the wisdom literature of Scripture and what it has as its core concept. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. This is a concept that is not easily defined or explored. I think that is one of the reasons that we have so much wisdom literature in Scripture. The fear of the Lord needs to be explored. One thing that I have learned from studying the wisdom literature of Scripture is that the fear of the Lord ought to lead to obedience. This is a concept that appears over and over again in Scripture. One place is in Deuteronomy 6, 2. It says that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's sons, by keeping his statutes and his commandments. So how do you fear the Lord? By keeping his commandments. Remember Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Throughout wisdom literature, throughout scripture, we see that fear, love, and obedience, they're all linked. I love that Sinclair Ferguson includes the lines from Amazing Grace in this chapter. "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved." And then he follows with Matthew 1, 24. When Joseph woke up from this dream, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife. God responds to Joseph's fear with grace upon grace. That grace leads to fear, relief of fear, and ultimately obedience for Joseph. I think that's perfect. That is what it means to have Emmanuel, God with us. Merry Christmas.